and if you enjoy all things crafty and arty, card making, paper craft, maybe some watercolour painting, then give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below. If you hit the bell, then you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. I generally do videos on a Thursday, Friday, sometimes a Sunday and sometimes in between just to give you some extra inspiration. But here's today's video coming up next. techniques in a beautiful metallic gold and a simple stamping technique in black over the top. So I've got a piece of card here, I've got some watercolour card but use whatever card you've got, uh, it can be smooth or um, textured whichever you like as long as it's a decent weight so I tend to use 250 GSM or 300 GSM. And this is an A6 piece of card stock so I'm holding it in place with just two pieces of um, low tack masking tape. I'm also then marking off or masking off a rectangle area in the centre of the card using some more masking tape. If yours is too sticky, I just put mine on my top uh, to lose a bit of its stick before putting it on my card and that will stop it. Uh, ripping your card as you take it off, but I have got another tip on that later So I'm just uh, tearing pieces and making my rectangle in the center of my cardstock I'm using my Eureka, which is my stamping tool to use as a work surface here But I could easily use the, the mat that I've got behind or anything else you like So I'm then going to use our Thirsty Brush metallic watercolours and this is the beautiful shimmery gold gold mine it's absolutely full of mica so I'm just using a dry a wet on dry technique so I haven't pre-wet the card and I'm just going in one direction and laying some colour down onto the piece of card. I'm going to kind of layer up and go over a couple of times adding less and less water until I'm happy with the opaqueness of the, um, the gold on my card. Uh, that's the beauty of these watercolours, you can kind of dilute them down a little bit and have just a sheer wash or you can build them up to uh, a more opaque look. So because this is textured cardstock, when I remove that masking tape I may get some bleed underneath where there's some slight gaps um, from the tape and the paper. If you want to use smooth cardstock, you won't get these, but I actually quite like the look of them and there's a just a, you'll see there's a very slight rough edge to it once I take it off. So I'm just making sure I've got a nice blend there, there isn't any streaks as such, and just a nice smooth finish. So what I do then to take the masking tape off is first of all I dry the, the piece, you could leave it to dry naturally if you've got plenty of time but I use my heat tool to dry the paint first and then once I feel like the paint itself is pretty much dry I start peeling back the masking tape. Now use, doing that at the same time as using heat is a really good tip because it actually kind of melts the adhesive on the back of your tape so as you're peeling back it stops that masking tape uh, ripping into your cardstock at all or leaving any dirty marks and you'll see just how easy that peels off once you've got a bit of heat on there as well. And then you get a beautiful kind of centred piece of gold, gold rectangle in the centre of your card. Like I say I've got a bit of bleed underneath the masking tape here which I absolutely love anyway um, but if you want to avoid that use a really high quality craft masking tape not just the pan shop stuff that I'm using here and a smoother cardstock rather than a textured watercolour one that I've used here but I really like that look anyway. So once that's dry I'm actually going to go on to some stamping techniques over the top. Um, we're just going to create a kind of focal image uh, using one of our Adornit sets uh, which come with some shoes that I've designed but actually it, this shows that you can use those stamps on their own as well and create cute little cards. Um, these are kind of note card or small card size 
uh, but they're big enough stamps that you can use them multiple times together. So just checking my cardstock it used dry and I'm using this lovely geometric wing over the top. So this is where my stamping tool comes in really handy. The Eureka 101 by Tony Derrick at Stamps By Me is my stamping tool of choice. Sorry if you can hear my dog trotting around in the background. So just position that as you want. I do want a sentiment on the bottom of this piece of card as well. Uh, so I'm just choosing one from one of the shoe sets uh, that we've got. I think this one's from Style Goals, which is like an ankle tie shoe. And I'm just deciding where to put that. Because this is quite a small card, I'm just gonna try and fit it in at the bottom there, but then I have to move the wing kind of off center, which I didn't like. So I'm gonna do the wing first and then go back and do the sentiment near the bottom after. And they slightly overlap, but again, that's absolutely fine for me. I don't mind that at all. So I'm just gonna ink up with some black ink. I use the Versafine here uh, because you've got a kind of sheer uh, shimmery uh, finish on the paint I probably would have been better off using a stays on uh, but this works fine you just need to dry it off maybe with your heat tool or leave it to dry plenty of time before touching so you don't get any smudging but yeah stays on would work really well or maybe even memento just because that paint's given you kind of a a more slippery finish than cardstock. So I'm going back in with that sentiment and this sentiment says people like you never go out of style which goes perfectly with this kind of modern card image. So just position that again with my stamping tool. You could use acrylic blocks if you haven't got one of these uh, stamping tools but they are really good if you miss a bit you can go back in. So again just with the black ink like to do it twice just to make it really really nice and black. So that's my card panel done. I'm really happy with how that has turned out with the gold and the black together on the white cardstock. So I'm just going to clean off all my stamps and pop them back on the acetate sheet to keep them and then we're going to mount the card onto a card blank. So I'm going to use a craft card, meaning like the brown kind of recycled look uh, card for my card blank. So I'm just chopping that up in the background there. So I've chopped an A4 piece of card stock in half to make an A5 and then I score it half again, which will make an A6 perfectly sized card. Now this is an A6 size panel that I've used here so I will have to come back in in a moment and just trim that slightly uh, so I can get a, a small border of the craft there. Which as you can see they're exactly the same size. So I just go off here and just trim a millimetre or two just off each side of the panel just to keep that image centred in the middle of um, my work. And then I'll come back in and just mount that onto the card blank that I've made from the craft card using some double sided tape. So you'll see me come back and do that in a moment. These small cards are really nice to make in bulk. Um, so you always have cards to hand or even to give as a gift as unwritten cards. So these are the kind of things I like to make, say six or eight of a similar theme and then put them together uh, to make a little bundle, maybe even pop them in a box. So I hope you enjoyed that. Do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and like and subscribe if you'd like to see more card making and more watercolouring techniques. While you're there, just uh, maybe have a check out of some of these other videos that are on my YouTube channel. See if you like some of these techniques. And do feel free to get in touch if you'd like to see a particular de technique demonstrated or explained for you. Take care, hope you have a great evening.